playing around with it. Okay. The most important thing is that it picks up this. Which I think is good. Sales, tra sales trainer has arrived. Trainer. I've got lots of questions for you, my friend. Have you? Oh, oh yes. Where are we going now? Well, I like to do things differently. And I have done I've things. That. Mate, if you don't break boundaries, then you don't get noticed. True. And I think. I did things in typical formal environments, as you have done yourself. Yep. And we'll get. Coffee's in, and we can title it coffee with Matt, or we can title it whatever. But the important thing is to do this first, yeah. and then we can. I like to I like to, I like to record content, and then we get rolling. Yeah. And then we just there's your podcast. Yeah. yeah. And then we get chatting. There's your blog. So why podcasts? Are we on now? Yeah. Why yeah. podcasts? See, that's the thing. Everyone worries about. <clears throat> Oh, here's Matt, here's Nathan, we have to introduce. Oh, no, no. Just, no. just roll. Well, I was having a chat this afternoon, actually, about uh, just go for it. Yeah. Go for it and work it out afterwards. That's, that's my motto. That's the ethos. Uh, so why podcast? Podcast, it's a captive audience. And it is a captive... Yeah. Uh, the ability to have somebody's attention for 20, 30 minutes at a time. Whether they're driving, whether they're um, house, doing the housework whether they're working out, you've got that captive audience for 20, 30 minutes. And it's a great way to share nuggets of knowledge and nuggets of experience without having to try. Did you did you get passed on to it by anyone? Or did you think this is a way for me to market myself? Or did you find yeah, it's it a way, yourself? It's a way for me to market myself. I like to build my personal brand. And my yeah. personal brand is massively important to me. Which is, if you look at my LinkedIn profile, if you look at any of my social media and Instagram and stuff like that, personal brand is massively important to me and for me to have a narrative which I can control is also important so podcasts are I've always been into podcasts I've always listened to audio books and I've also always driven to uh, listen to music or, or, or learn constantly learn and podcasts I that yeah po always learn podcasts are a way for people to learn and yeah. listen to other people's experience I'm very much a people based person yeah. I like taking knowledge from other people, using it and adapting it and then regurgitating it. Um, one, of the, one of the quotes on my latest podcast is, innovation is actually a recombination. I listened. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked it. I thought so I like it was... to recombinate everybody else's knowledge yeah. and use it as my own. I think it's massively important. It's not stealing then. It's not stealing. <laughs> it's not stealing because yeah. it's me that's broadcasting it. I could, I could go into a, broad, uh, a podcast studio and do exactly the same podcast to somebody else but it's me that's delivering it and I'm the brand that is delivering it. Do you it. find that's what's going on a lot at the moment is everyone is... Because I I go home and I have arguments with myself about this at the moment that everyone is just... There's no originality. Thanks. Thank you. Which also that's the one more He's going to be in the vlog. <laughs> Coffees have arrived. There's no originality, is there? Well, for me, I mean, that's just my own personal thing. There's, there's lots of um, trends, topics, yeah. Yeah. and we go through fluxes and phases. Um, but like what we're doing right now, maybe it's just me. I like to. I'm very, di I'm very different and unique, think, and I like to. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to put my stamp on it. I think there is a lot of trend following, um, but trends are set by somebody. And if you're setting a trend, like you are, for example, doing a vlog which isn't scripted, which isn't live, which it is live, but it isn't uh, pre, pre. I don't know what the questions are in the post line. Scripted, I guess, yeah. yeah. I, in a plan. Then, then that's setting a trend which is different. Mm. So if you're setting a trend which is different, then are you a trendsetter or are you a... Well, exactly, that's the question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you are following the trend because everybody does, loads of people do vlogs, loads of people do podcasts. Yeah. But you're doing something different in your, your brand. I guess that's the, the thing, and, I, and it goes back to what it, what's the reason for you doing it, whether it's yourself or others, whether you want to be a trendsetter, or whether you're just doing it for you, or whether you're doing it for, you know, and we've got, we got a lot here, whether it's uh, money or passion, 
you know, um, you know, what drives you? Because there's a lot, you know, because we can. So sell. money, money doesn't drive me. Okay. Um, I've been in the sales career for the span of 15 years. Yeah. Um, I could be incentivized with the biggest bonus. So yes, my wife would say. Because we've all had them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and my wife would say, no, you are driven by money, but I'm not. Uh, my driver, and I've done psychometrics on myself and had psychometrics done on me, my driver is recognition. Mm. And I like to be recognised for the achievements that I've had. And I've had a fair few achievements in my corporate career. But um, my driver for the podcast is passion. I love talking to other people. And it's also uh, building my own brand. Yeah. So I've got a career path set out in my head, which is five, ten years' time, in order for me to achieve that career path in five, Big ten picture. Yeah, in order for me to achieve that career in five, ten years' time, I need the content and the personality to shine through because everybody's going to have a CV, everybody's going to have a LinkedIn profile, but not everybody's going to have five years' worth of podcasts, vlogs. Do you think the CV is kind of outdated now? Do you think LinkedIn is just, is just deleting is, the idea of a CV? I think CVs are an antiquated version of LinkedIn. Yeah. However, it's not progressed that far yet that LinkedIn is the go-to method to research somebody. Whenever I recruit, I look at somebody's LinkedIn. If not on LinkedIn, I question why. Yeah. Uh, I look at somebody's Facebook or Instagram profile, and if I can't find them, that's a good thing, because they're either shut down or they haven't got it. Um, but recruitment now, I feel, should go down the LinkedIn route, and should go down the online personality and brand route, because that's the way companies sell. Companies sell to you by having a showcase web, web page they have a showcase landing page. So I think people should do exactly the same to companies. Do you think selling has changed? Because I come from a selling background before, well, before I even got into it. <laughs> I'm not going to get onto me because it's a very long story. We'll get there eventually. Um, my very first job in sales was uh, knocking on doors in Bournemouth. So the old school that. way of doing that. Yep, yep. I've sold gas and electricity. Hard graft, as you know. Yeah. And um, and I was taught then that's you know if you get in the door that's that was my idea of how to sell. Now in 2020, what a lot of people and people younger than myself, you know, my generation, your generation, very different. And not that far. What I'm seeing, <laughs> um, what I'm seeing, is not what I was taught the idea of selling. It's very different. What was your idea of selling? Well, exactly that. You know, um, I had I had sales trainers. I, I've gone from uh, you know uh, cold calling. I've gone from lead generation KPIs to knocking on doors. I've done all, all very different versions. But now people are uh, contacting me and going, subscribe to my YouTube channel. They're tweeting me, and I'm going, what are you offering me? Are you building a rapport with me? Are you, are you communicating with me? There's no, it's. I want this now. So sales has changed in the sense that the consumer is much more aware. Yeah. The consumer knows that he can go, he or she can go to Google and, for it's example, quick. Yeah, and, and, and find more information about the product than the seller knows himself. So the sales process has changed in that sense that the consumer is more aware. What hasn't changed in the sales process is that people still buy from people. Yeah. And what you're finding is people that are tweeting you and, and trying to get to you in terms of that like social and, and online way, I try to build a rapport with you. They're doing it the wrong but way. I think the relationship part of it is broken down a little bit, a little bit maybe. Possibly, possibly. Because of maybe such things as... Or they're just not affecting salespeople. Well, they're not knowing how to use it properly, I think. Because yeah, I can use things like direct messaging and you know platforms like LinkedIn and TikTok and Instagram, the way I sell. But I know how to use them properly, and other people might be using it like. So if you take direct messaging, for example, direct messaging is exactly the same as cold calling. Yeah, and I, I, think and so I don't too. Like, I don't like the term cold calling because cold calling, for example, if you want, if you, if you lived in a caravan, you're not going to buy double glazing. But, <laughs> but if I called you and tried to sell you double glazing, that's cold calling because I don't know, I haven't identified that you've got a need, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to give you a product which you don't need. Um, what I like to teach in sales classes that I've um, run is that you have to identify the need and the consumer that you're trying to sell to. Yeah. I do a lot of B2B uh, selling rather than B2C. Mm -hmm. So the business that needs my service or product, yeah. 
I've identified that they've got that need, they've got that requirement. So if I'm proud of the value that I have in my product and I recognize the value I've got, then they're going to need that product. As long as you're generating value in every stage of the process uh, and you believe in that product, then you've got nothing to worry That's about. That's it, isn't it? It's about, and I think a lot of people slip up on that, it's about providing value. Yeah. Because whether it's the example I gave before, I could give you a hundred examples, they're not thinking whether you're in the YouTube game or traditional sales game or, or in a job in a call centre calling up the list of phone calls you've got to give and go, right. But that's where that's call centres cool. that's where call centers are dead. because uh, you don't get many calls now where people are trying to sell you double glazing or trying to sell you insurance policies because the relationship between the consumer and the company is different. The consumer can get that information, the consumer can get the insurance policy, the consumer can get everything that they need. And what they can't get is, um, what, they can't, what they don't like is being told that they need it, and that's where the relationship has changed. But even the principle of that providing value, even as some well, people who taught value. me, I was, I, even when I was calling up people, you know, when I first moved to Bournemouth in jobs that I had, I was taught, identify exactly like you said and provide yeah. because otherwise before you they're not why, why would they talk to you mm -hmm. you know sure build a rapport get into the phone call you know stay 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 with them but provide something provide a reason for them to talk to you yeah you know yeah. have a relationship have, have a dialogue otherwise they're not gonna why would they talk to you exactly you know, why are you why are you here now <laughs> Who knows? Exactly. You know, so I'm, a, I'm a fan of coffee. You need to feed. You need to feed something to them. Otherwise, they're, they're, they're just going to go. Um, now, this is a this is a great opportunity for me to, um, on my podcast, I, I interview other people. This is a great opportunity for me to discuss with somebody who I don't know and you don't know me, um, exactly what I do, how I do it, what my belief system is. I've got it all right here. Exactly. I'm trying <laughs> to read the question before you ask them. No, that's for me. <laughs> I think. Um, I think this is a... That's another skill of the salesperson, by the way, to read upside down. Because then if you can see what the client's got in front of them, yeah. you can close with it. Yeah, I'll click it. Can you read it all? No. No. I can't read your handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a messy handwriter. I think stuff like this is really cool because um, I hope in picking it all up. <laughs> so no, my phone. Um, but I saw it on a Netflix show. I, yeah, I think it was a comedian. He goes around picking up other famous people in, in cars and then does and goes for coffee. Yeah. and then just sits and, and chats with them. And I was like, that's so different. Yeah. Rather than doing the whole Jimmy Fallon stuff, you know, with the lights in the studio, yeah. you just, you're in a coffee place and you're just talking. Yeah. You know, why do things the ordinary way? Yeah. Just do things, perfectly you know, casual. Um, let's talk about the army. Okay. How did the army help you in other jobs, you know, the, the normal nine to five jobs. How did experiencing life in the army, you know, and we can go in depth. How did that help you to where you are now? Uh, process. Yep. Uh, prior preparation prevents physical performance. Love it. <laughs> uh, That's straight up army answer. <laughs> I, I like um, I like process. I like order, um, mm -hmm. and so does the corporate world. Business likes order. Do. Business likes. Uh, structure and for me to get an end result B I need to do A and I yep. can replicate A as many times as possible in order to get to B um, personally what it's given me is a sense that I can build a team from anything uh, I'm able to get people I've said this many times on my podcast but I'm able to get people to do things when they don't actually know that they're doing it yep. um, and I'm very capable of uh, manipulate is the wrong word but very capable of being able to bring people into a narrative and bring people into a, a conversation, whether that's uh, corporately or personally. I'm able to generate that sense that actually you need to you need understanding to do this the situation. Yeah, for the greater good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so process, uh, team building, and a sense of pride. I think a sense of pride. I represent my country, so there's nothing higher. Than that, do you reflect back on that? Uh, from time to time, or has so much happened since? Do I reflect then, my, on my time in the army? Look, look, look. I think I only miss. Uh, there's only two things that I miss in the army, and that is the sense of collectiveness. Yeah. Uh, everyone being there together, and that's why I like the teamwork that I um, generate now. 
Yeah, yeah collectiveness, everyone being together. And also like this sense of adventure. Uh, the sense of that. That's why I think it was the MSC and all for that. Yeah. Uh, adventure, being able to go to places like Canada, Iraq, Kuwait, doing lots of different things. Um, but having no responsibilities. Now I'm married, I've got kids, so <laughs> I've got lots of responsibilities. But moving forward, I mean, that sense of um, the sense of adventure, the sense of what could happen next, obviously not in the sense of military in the army, but is that what you are perhaps looking with what you're creating now? So it's self, just in a different concept? But the same self, so, self change is a adventure. Um, the current, my current company now, I've been to, uh, so we've got international offices, so I've been to lots of different countries. I've been to Chile in the last six months. I've been to um, the United States, I travel regularly to the United States. Um, France is where I have offices, so I go there quite a lot. <coughs> I was supposed to go to Spain in, in, this, in January, but my wife was ill, so I could go to Spain. But there's a sense that I can go to different countries and I'm able to flex my network and grow it. Um, what I'm trying to do with sales change is prepare for the future. And preparing the future in the sense that I'm stretching my comfort zone and doing something that's completely different. Yeah. Um, not many people are comfortable behind the mic asking questions and receiving answers. Uh, not, many people are, not many people are able to do it. It's very difficult to uh, actively listen. So whilst I'm speaking now, I'm sure you're thinking of a follow-up question. But it's very <laughs> difficult to... That's a, that's a learned skill. That you have to constantly listen to what the person's saying, but also think of a follow-up question. I think... Sales. As, as, as you've said, yeah, it, it's, it's as I think you've said in your previous podcast or a few other things, you know, are things there or can things be told to some others? And, you know, you talked before and I think, I think it was a third podcast or was it the previous one? And that's an interesting question because, you know, as someone who uh, pretty much failed school spectacularly myself I did um, you know and for the people like that for us you know we, we think I think a lot about that you know and we think a lot, about, a lot about failing at school what, that and others and, and, and about uh, improving yourself and when you get onto paths like uh, where we are now you, you reflect back on that and that's moving on to my next question because you think you think back to your earlier days on, um, what if I went this way, or if I did that? Smiling how, doors are safe. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, so, you know, the question of, um, can you teach someone to do this? Uh, you know, is someone born this way? It's, it's a very, you know, it's a very I was having this conversation question. with somebody this afternoon, and I think sales is a uh, natural ability. Mm -hmm. uh, some people can be taught it, that's no question. Uh, but sales is a natural ability, and... It comes down to self-confidence mainly. Uh, when you've got confidence in yourself, you're able to have a conversation with anybody and do anything. Um, the question about whether... Um, I've forgotten the first question. I think it was a mixture of bags. We were just talking about uh, whether people can be uh, taught you know, skills uh, or whether they're just ingrained in them. You know, yeah, so. I, think, I think it is a case of it being ingrained. Well, no, actually, Obviously I don't. Actually, don't. When I joined the army, yeah, know, when I joined so the army, DNA. I was skinny ginger kid at yeah. school. My dad was the same in the army. Now he's massive. Now I'm a six foot two yeah. bulk of a human being. Um, my self confidence when I first joined the army was minimal. Mm. Now I've got no problems in getting up in front of five hundred to a thousand people and delivering a keynote speech. There is the, the self confidence and the ability to be genuine to yourself is massively key. I think. When you're, like you said, I've said lots of things on the podcast, but what I do say is true to me. I'm not trying to portray a personality or trying to portray somebody who I'm not. That's where people trip themselves That's up. That's the key thing. It's about being authentic. Authent isn't it? Authenticity yeah. is massive, and my message is constant and clear. Yeah. As soon as I deviate from that or try and pretend to be something I'm not, that's then, really then the brand, then the brand yeah. goes because that's when the trust goes from anybody who's listening or watching or or, or viewing my profiles. As soon as you're not portraying or not acting in the brand that you've built, that's when you lose. That's the customer. problem. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem nowadays, and that's how I started with what I'm doing because I was 
of just coming out of the fitness industry, and that was full of fake. That was full of image and status and look at me, right? Yeah. That was full of flexing and that was full of, you know. But that's how the, that's how people sell on social media these days. Well, that's everyone. Yeah. Well, not a large percentage of it. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to create something more where be yourself, be true, mm -hmm. and you, you can change the game. Yeah. And more people are starting to do that now. Because if you can really be yourself, you've got nothing left to lose. So you, 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 that's it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. There's no, there's no hidden trip ups. There's no, there's no. Suddenly you've got to portray a character which you're trying to build. And in my, in my early twenties, I was trying to portray a character. But now I'd rather just. It's, it's too much stress and too much hardship to, mm. to try and create something and then try and pretend to be it every single day. Just be who you are. And if people, that's what. Probably the message here is not everybody's going to like you, and if nobody, if if seventy percent of people like you and thirty percent don't, who cares about the thirty percent? Who yeah. cares about it? Because ultimately, I, I couldn't care less. What was school like for me? Uh, it was awful. I was, um, yeah. uh, I was the skinny ginger kid, so I was bullied. Ginger? Yeah, I was really quite ginger. Yeah, yeah. It, it's changed over time. <laughs> it's changed over time. Okay. But I was, I was, I was proper character. I was skinny. Yeah. Uh, and Grace. I, what's that? Grace. No. Uh, rubbish. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I've got uh, you in science. And I mean, I science a job now. Um, I was. The only thing I was good at, and I got a start A in, was English speaking. Um, it's interesting. Is, yeah, the, the one GCSE that I passed was English literature. Everything yeah. else flunked. And I think it's it, it's still the same way, and I think it's terrible. That we're, we're, we're pressuring. Um, we're pressuring everyone to, to be this perfect, you know, version of themselves when... Um, GCS, GCSEs don't matter. Yes, <laughs> they, they don't. GCSEs school don't matter. doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, matter. that's quite broad, but... Well, school doesn't matter. Um, uh, life I, experience matters. I don't more. think I even was aware of what I was choosing at that time, because I wanted to fit in, like most kids. Yeah. You, you take the classes because of a girl was in that class or yeah. someone that you liked or your best friend you know so I was choosing I didn't know what I was doing because I was too. like everyone else in high school you just existed and you wanted to go with you yeah, know where, where things were going and it, I, genuinely until the last three years I probably didn't start making decisions that I was like properly self-aware until 22, 25 I didn't start making self-aware decisions until I was 30 yeah <laughs> And I'm, Get that. I'm 39 now. <laughs> exactly. So I, think I, didn't take, I, didn't, I didn't take control of my own career until I was post 30. That's the scary thing, isn't it? Yeah. And but what I what I would say is don't discount the years between 17 and 30 because those 13 years are giving you the experience uh, to now use that experience. So I was managed by really good people. I was managed by really poor people. We were able to take that experience and say this is this is how you should do this. Mm. Uh, I was in the army, so I've taken the processes and the, the dis disciplines that I've learned in the army and put that into practice in my corporate life now. So those 30 years are, uh, those 13 years between 17 and 30 are massively important. But now what I do is constantly learn and constantly take in knowledge, which I probably didn't do in those first 13 I years. I think people underestimate life experience. You know, I think, yes, I've lost friends and I've lost, I, I say lost friends, I probably should have lost them because. Uh, you know, high school dropout, didn't go to university, ended up where I am now, but I look back now and I think that's all good because all of that life experience, those jobs, that travel, the, the house share that I did, the places, that cities How that I lived know? in, uh, 26. You've got a whole lifetime. Exactly. I'm still a baby. Yeah. But despite being 26, I've lived in uh, three cities. I've lived in way too many house shares and flats than I have for my age and people people I've dated friends I have they still live at home mm -hmm. and they're still you know way different scenarios so I look back and I think wow 26 still a baby but done all of that that's good I look back at that and I think yeah didn't go to uni fucked up school but I'm creating this yeah so it's about perspective do you have an end game I do. We'll get to that later. Okay. Quality or quantity? Quality. Really? Yeah. Interesting. 
because it's that's, a, not, that's a broad, it's a that's a broad question, decision. Isn't it? That's a broad decision. Because uh, volume broad decision. or quality, because people can overthink. You can think oh, right, like, right now we can be the sound, the picture, or you can just make it. I think society is moving towards quality. Mm. Um, there's a lot of talk online about generating content that's regular and consistent. But what that regular and consistent it's got to be regular and consistent, but also generate value and mean something. If you don't generate something that's valuable and mean something, people will pass it by. It's very Saying quick. that, somebody posted a, video, a photo of an avocado and it got a million likes. Very true. So, what is content? So it's breaking <laughs> from the norm. Yeah. It's breaking from the norm. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I, I would always, my personal preference is I would go over quality over quantity. Now, that, that's not to say that you shouldn't just do it because a lot of, like this is raw video mm -hmm. footage um, and hopefully it's quality. But, well this is, yeah, yeah. This, is the, this is the quality, exactly. that's the volume. Exactly, there's so a lot. break it up. Yeah, and on my podcast now we video them and I yeah. bite, spice them up into bite-sized chunks so I've got quantity and quality because it's, it's, you can consume it all or you can consume little bite-sized bite chunks. Does age matter? Following on from a little bit of what we just talked about, does, does age, age really matter? matter? Uh, it's a big talking point. Does age matter? Does age matter in what sense? Well, um, I know I've experienced it a lot. As if you someone, want me to play football, I'm way past that. I'm well, 40, so age matters. You, you but if you want me to talk, second, you know. Um, in my experience, um, I was. Uh, One day you will wake up and the last rugby game that you played will be the last game. One day. I remember my last rugby game. You're not played. Yeah, but you, you're only 26. You could play another rugby game that's before you're. I can't play rugby. I can't play another rugby game. I am. T I am 26, and I already have cartilage problems in my knee. So, so I. And one day you'll wake up. <laughs> one day you'll wake up, and the last club that you walked out of will be the last club that you ever walked out of. Yeah. Can anyway. you remember? Can you remember the last playground that you walked out of, out of as a kid? So you can't. All of these things. We're getting deep. Right. <laughs> You don't answer the question. <laughs> what was the question? Age or does age matter? Age. Uh, I think it does in a sense. Yeah. Um, you could never be too old for something, uh, but it depends how you're applied. I know I've been turned down for jobs because of your age. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never turned someone down because of their age. I know. I know. In my in rugby, I've been not picked because I'm too old, and they pick. The U students that are younger. Yeah, but that's, that's down to physical attributes. I'm saying it's, it's a wide yeah, perspective, yeah. so you know. I mean, when I'm in my company now, uh, I've got somebody who's worked for the business for 35 years, mm. is due to retire in, let's say, four to five years. Um, another guy that's worked for us for 30 years, there's another guy that's worked for 15 years. All of that experience is valuable. Um, one of my staff just retired in December after working for us for 30 years. Um, she wanted to retire a year earlier. Yeah. But in order to have a proper transition in place, so that the younger members of the team can then take the experience and just glean all of that stuff, like Harry Potter with a wand, yeah. um, it was important for us to keep her in business. So sure. experience and age does matter when you've got that experience. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or, or wanting to start a business. You can start a business at any age. Um, That's it, yeah. Sport, sport it wouldn't matter. Yeah, because of physical, physical attributes. Yeah. But you can do anything at any age. Good answer. Are you on TikTok? Yes. Yes. Yeah, of Good man. Yes. Get on TikTok. TikTok is uh, a fun platform. Fun? Or fun. I, I I go on TikTok for fun. Uh, yeah. I'm big into editing videos, so I like to make something different. Okay. Well, that's cleared that up. Um, I was gonna. <laughs> I was... <laughs> what's, my, what's, that. My, what's my TikTok name? I was gonna. I was getting gonna get into the uh, potential. Marketing purposes of TikTok and how big it is right now, but TikTok Team King is my. Uh, if it's uh, if it's just for fun, then we can leave it at fun. Oh, I use it for fun. Uh, I don't know how you would leverage it at the moment because ads aren't. We'll put it this way. On um, one of my my most viewed videos on YouTube is close to 400 views. When Jose Mourinho it just becomes Spurs manager, and he was playing. Manchester United for the first time, I did a video saying, is it weird that I want Jose to win for Manchester United? I was a big United fan of Jose. I was like, I love Jose as a manager. I said, is it weird that I want him to win? Part of me, just part of me. Yeah. You know, I love the guy. Yeah. So, and then I got a shitload of stick. I got 22,000 people viewed that video. 
I've never had that many views in my life. Yeah, but these things. That's the organic the reach. Yeah, yeah. Of TikTok. Yeah. So that shows how big it is right now. Yeah. What my biggest uh, video on TikTok is, I think it's about nine thousand uh, yeah. views, and it's me asking for a coffee. And I've been on YouTube for three years, so yeah. that shows how big it is right now. So if you were to leverage it. Whatever your purpose is, yeah, but I, wouldn't you have, I, I wouldn't know how to leverage it in terms of um, trying to generate or monetize it. To, to, to leverage, it to it leverage the an content, audience, yeah, is, to, to, to gain an audience, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but again, you've got to be consistent with TikTok. That's the thing. Not a one and done. I think, I think it's still early. I think it's still early, and it, like any new app, like when MySpace came out, when Facebook came out, it's still new, but it's definitely got the reach. Yeah. Instagram and everything else. I created a business plan for my company. Uh, so I run the UK arm and the US arm of uh, a multi a global company, and I created a business plan for my CEO for our, our arm of the business. And one of my specific points at the end of the business plan was that we need to leverage social media more. I'm a huge poster on LinkedIn. Yeah. I said that we should be following the trends that are in China. We should maybe go to um, WeChat or, or some Chinese. Uh, social media platform because that's a market that we don't leverage. Uh, I also said that we should make a fun element using TikTok and we should post on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we are moving towards that way because we're on Twitter which is mainly where every, every company is but we are moving towards, I mean I've got lots of videos on my phone today so to let everybody know that we're still open and I'll edit them up into a montage which just says we're open in various different languages and then we'll post that on LinkedIn. But it's just leveraging what we can generate in terms of uh, content and the last picture that I posted on LinkedIn was me holding the whiteboard saying we're still open. So it's just leveraging what you can do with a whiteboard and a pen and creating some content because pe that's what people consume. I think it's about volume and as you just said that consume, you know, a lot of people spend too much time overthinking the perfect post rather than just posting. Yeah. How much time does it take you to actually tweet? Three seconds? How much time does it actually take you to do an Instagram post? You know, I've probably got over 700 Instagram posts, and some people who are on Instagram with thousands, thousands of so you've followers. So you got 700 Instagram posts. Um, if you went onto my personal Instagram page, I limit myself to 100 posts. Exactly. Why? Um, because I prefer quality over quantity. That's the problem. But I also don't like. But that's your personal. Maybe your business. No, my business you don't is have to limit it. Yeah. That's different. Yeah, and that's but that's personal brand. So my. Uh, Instagram, my personal Instagram is limited to 100 posts. As soon as I start I nudging that. to about 110, yeah. 120, I archive some and then just... So with up. your business, you can go completely unlimited. Yeah. And that's my point. So what I do with... The because it's a back catalogue. The people that I consult with, <coughs> I get them to break free of those holes and go, look, if it's your business, they're still having that mentality of it's my personal thing. I still care what other people think. Why? It's your business. Mm -hmm. Post, 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 post. Because... That's that's your, that's your business. You want to get people to. If it's a coffee shop and people are really, you know, in here and it's full, take a video, take a photo, post it. You want people to see that people are in. Yeah. You know, it's about getting people to. What do people spend ninety percent of people uh, of people looking at your phone? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to get it out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't don't waste the opportunity. Yeah. And you know, people are spending way too much time caring about. Is the light right? Do I look good in this? And people, especially influencers, which is a big, big market now, they may have millions of followers, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers, but if you actually look at the amount of posts they have, 15, 20, and if you look at all of their posts, it's them maybe in a bikini looking really good because, yeah, they look good in a bikini. Look at my <laughs> but is that, a good, is, that, is that a good strategy? Short term, sure. Yeah. Long term, for building a, a legacy or a business, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So um, it's it's interesting, you know, and I get like, DMs all the time from you know those kind of people, especially back in the fitness industry who I've trained with, former clients, and don't get me wrong, they're you know attractive people, they're getting a huge following, but they, they're messaging me going. I'm not engaging with these people. I can't keep posting people videos of me squatting, you know, videos of me looking good because it's making me unhappy. You know, they're depressed. You know, they don't want to do it anytime. You know, so they want to post something different. And if, but if they post a video of a sunset or something, they don't get as many likes. Yeah. So. But 
you shouldn't chase social engagement. You should just chase the people did authenticity. Yeah, authenticity. That's what that's what I'm trying to break. Yeah. Oh, chase. If you need to. No, no. It's lots of videos from different countries. <laughs> right. Go for it. We're gonna get deep. What did your parents want you to do? My parents want me to do. Uh, not look at a screen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not look at extreme. I think all parents wanted us to. Yeah, they wanted me to uh, stay in the corner, be quiet. Uh, PC, not Career great. wise, did they have any aspirations? Uh, they wanted me to join the army. Okay, so you, the army. you followed Which, the traditional. No, I didn't, because I um, I didn't live at home when I joined the army. I'd left okay. home by 12, uh, and I, I, I grew up in the care system, so uh, I was in foster care, and then. But, but prior to that, my parents have always intimated oh, the army would be a good career. And yep. during the time when I grew up, the big industry, the emerging industry, was the telecommunications yep. industry. And it was when 9X and Virgin and, and Sky were having the big battle. And, sure. Uh, so I wanted to transition into a career which would uh, prove long uh, and, and give longevity. So I transitioned into uh, a career which, the bare minimum for the grades that I got, I, I got bare minimum grades, so I tra transitioned into a career which the best career that I could with the grades that I got. And I was a telecommunications engineer in the army. So I just maximized the opportunity that I had. Because I grew up in the care system, I went to lots of different schools, so I didn't get the grades. Um, but I'm a bright cookie, so I just managed to get through and get past. Uh, but my, I think my parents just wanted me to join the army, just to keep me off the streets uh, and to make sure that I was behaving myself. I was quite a, a, quite, quite a tear away, uh, quite, I knew what I wanted to do, but what I wanted to do was not always right. So making sure that, it, but, that I think but there is no right or wrong. You know, I think even now, I mean, how, how old are you now? Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Yeah. So um, there are people um, that are perhaps you know fifty, sixty. They still go. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And um, I think that's a good thing. I watched something the other day, and I related to this 100%, you know, being nervous, having that questionable factor in your head and going, hold on a second, is this the right call? That's a good thing, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I had that a lot when I was playing rugby, you know, that ability to make the right decision, the right pass or not, um, you know, because that was the only thing, I didn't really have it at school. Um, at work, sure, you know, but work was always a bit of a hit and miss with me before I started what I'm doing. And I think that ability to go, to have the nerves, to have the decision making process, that's a good thing. And I think, you know, you should question yourself at times. You should, yeah, but not too much. Not too much, but it, to be self aware yeah. enough to go, right, this is the also, right balance. You should also have confidence in the fact that whatever you do, it goes back to being authentic, and yeah. if you know where you want to end up, and you, you put your end game, if you know that whatever you're going to get offered or whatever you want to do fits with that end game, then go for it. Like this vlog, I could have said no, I could have said yes, but ultimately, this just builds content around my brand and me. So why wouldn't I say yes? So it, it the ultimate aim is still the same, but everything else has to just fit with that mold. Uh, one piece of advice that my grandma gave me when I was growing up and I was changing jobs was don't change careers, make sure that you stick with what you know and what you do. Yeah. Because um, I, I got offered a different job in a different industry, a different career, but what I did was stay with what I knew and stay with what I did because that, that ultimately gave me the experience to build to where I am now. That one piece of advice has stayed with me because it makes sure that I'm, I'm, I'll always be involved in sales or marketing or, 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 or some aspect of that. And that's what sales change is all about, it's just building that brand and making sure that companies know how to grow out of a period of lackluster performance or, or a team knows how to grow out of that performance lull. Um, that's what I know. I know, how to, yeah. I know how to generate growth, I know how to generate people's enthusiasm and I know what to do in order to get from point, to point, point A to point B. So it's just making sure that you stick with what you know. If you're being offered something and you're not confident enough to say, right, actually, let's take a step back and go, and I'm guessing this is what you've done, is just say, take a step back, let's have a look at what we're doing. If it's from point A to point B, if it fits with that model that I know that where I want to be, because ultimately you need to figure out what B is. Sure. If you know how to get to B, do it. This is what B is all about. Absolutely. 
What's next for Sales Change? With doing podcasts, yeah. creating content, helping people grow. Where do you see yourself in, let's say, three, four years? So, so my end game, my, um, I run a successful company now, uh, but I work for somebody else. Yeah. I don't want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life. I agree. Um, so, <laughs> Sales Change is my side hustle. Yeah. What I see with sales changes for the next five years is generate content, generate uh, a brand around myself. Once I've generated content, so all of my achievements, I've grown sales teams in previous roles. I've, I've generated numbers for other people. Mm-hmm. My company now, we've got a plan to get to a certain point within a certain time frame. If I get to go that. Yeah, so I've got all the achievements on this side. What I have on this side, which is sales change, is all of the content and the brand to go with it. When those two diverge, and in five years' time I leave my job, or, or ten years' time, where however time long this time frame is, when I leave that job, I've got all the content to back it up, plus the, the experience of keynote speeches and delivering yeah. some talks and all this sort of stuff. I want to move into a non-executive director role, work sure. for lots of different companies, advise them on how to grow from point A to point B, and doing exactly what I'm passionate about. Is it about having that little bit of freedom, maybe, a little bit on later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I don't want to work for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about. Right. Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Mm, I don't. I had this conversation this morning with somebody else. Entrepreneur. Okay, become, no, I entrepreneur has become a dirty word. It has a little bit. I, I do consider myself an entrepreneur. Because yeah. this is an interesting question. Because the last previous vlogs that I've done with uh, Barbara and Sarah is actually entrepreneurs themselves. We spent hours talking about it because entrepreneurship has become this huge thing now, uh, especially in my generation, where everyone wants to be one. And I don't think it was really until the Facebook movie where entrepreneurship was like, holy shit, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> when, gener- there's a generation alpha, which is 2010 onwards. Yeah. And 2010 onwards, I think you've got to expect that everybody who's been born from 2010 onwards is going to have a side hustle whether you employ them or not, everybody needs to have a side hustle. But before then, it was like, if you were an entrepreneur, it was, it was hard, lonely, you know. It is. <laughs> and it is, and believe me, my life sucks. I had tuna out of a can for breakfast this morning. <laughs> so, um, it's healthy, it's yep, protein. That's, uh, you know, if you watch a lot of my vlogs, entrepreneurship is not nice, my friend. Um, you know, so. So do problem, I consider myself an entrepreneur? Yes. Yeah, do you yes. consider yourself? Okay, yeah. great. Um, and do you believe that entrepreneurship is becoming maybe too big for groups as a culture? In order? No, I think it's harder to find a niche because everyone's finding a niche. Yeah. Um, this is a niche, podcasts are a niche. Uh, I think people are trying to become an entrepreneur when they don't necessarily need to be. Yeah. I think people um, try to generate, I think people see a lot of people generating content online or generating value online. I think I can do that without the necessary experience. Yeah, chasing the money. They are chasing the money, and, yeah. and sales change isn't about chasing the money, it's not ch- about chasing the coin, and it's like I said to you earlier, I'm not motivated by money, I will be eventually, passion. it's passion and it's yeah. about making sure that I do what I'm comfortable doing, uh, which is working with people. As yeah. soon as I start working with people, the natural progression to that is going to be earning money. It's you said, go back to your niche, people is where I'm comfortable with, surprisingly, because I have terrible anxiety and I'm suffering with a lot of other things, but... As you hear now, I'm, there are people that I'm comfortable with, and I'm able to build up rapport with, you know, uh, like-minded individuals. There are some environments and some things that I just cannot do, and I will say, no, nope, can't do that. Um, some days I will literally just uh, stay at home and play people all weekend and just go, I'm sacking this off because you know I'm more comfortable. With that. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm comfortable with things like this, and I build something around it because you've got to know your niche yeah. and I think that's where entrepreneurs can struggle. If you know what you're strongest in, then you should go invest in that. Yeah. You, know, you can't just go YouTube channel, right, great. <laughs> yeah. You've got to, you've got you've got to know what your good substance is. Exactly. Yeah. Um, who's your biggest inspiration? It could be anyone. Who's my biggest inspiration? Good question, right? Yeah. It's probably the one I haven't thought of. Most people do. Uh, who's my biggest inspiration? I don't really... I'm inspired by a lot of people. There's a guy, Simon Sinek. 
Uh, yeah, no, I got his book. Uh, Start with why, right? Yeah, and Leaders Eat Last. And He's a cool dude, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Simon Sinek's an inspiration. Um, yeah. Can't think of him anymore. Okay. Mine's Johnny Wilkinson. Yours is? Yeah. I had the uh, fortune of uh, playing rugby with him in Bath. He is a, a crazy, crazy guy. Um, in a good way. But um, I think your inspiration should be, yeah, I think you can't have just one. I think, you know, having an inspiration is, uh, you know, someone who should, you know, at times it could be my dad, you know, someone who's there for you, who helps you, or, you know, someone like me. If you, if you, take, if you take that analogy of inspiration, see, I was thinking of the, one of the questions that we ask on the podcast is which leader do you look up to the most? Well, yeah. I was trying to think of a leader. But if you're taking it to that degree, can't then, be anyone. then my family inspires me because exactly. my wife and my kids make sure that I remain grounded. Yeah. But it also gives me a reason to go to work. By the time I turned 30, I was starting to create a family. And that's when my life decided to stop being chaos and move into a bit of semblance of order. And that's when my corporate head woke up and I knew where I wanted to be. Yeah, it doesn't so have to probably, be the probably, typical... Yeah, probably my family, my wife. Yeah, I think, I think my dad is the, the you know, biggest biggest one of those for me um, you know he's, he's been there throughout probably thick and thin but um, if you're talking like you know uh, leaders and you know uh, inspirations um, my earliest memory of rugby was probably the 2003 World Cup yeah. where Johnny dropped it and you know I, I was got, in Iraq I got an opportunity to meet him yeah and um, and he's one of the humblest guys I know and um, and he's probably a leader you know so he's got everything um, and he's, he's just, he's really, he's really off the, uh, I don't know, what's the right word? Off the book, no. He just, he just, Humble. Uh, yeah, he just, you know, keeps to himself. Um, but if you see him in, an, in a rugby environment as well, he's one of the best leaders in, you know, in the world. Yeah. Uh, he will, he's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and as for me, yeah. You know, unbelievable to see that first time. Um, speed round. Go for it. You can see that, can't you? Peach or curry? Curry. <laughs> rugby or football? Football. Okay. Yeah, I don't like rugby. I'll watch it, but I'm not. Have you done Money or Happiness? Batman or Superman? Uh, Superman. Really? Yeah. 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 Would you rather fly than have lots of money? I don't have the money. Wow. Batman's cooler, man. Nah, Superman. All the way. Right. I leave it to you. What's your end game? My end game? Yeah. You, I, you, are, you said you'd tell me that later, so. I'm building, obviously, uh, some things that I could help others grow. And eventually, I would like to have a freedom where I can walk into work have Alexander as the as the name and not only be Alexander Consulting. So whether that's a an office or a firm, have Alexander Media, Alexander Branding, Alexander Consulting. I'm talking big, I'm talking yeah. like whatever. Um, but I got into this as an accident. I didn't choose to get into this whole blogging branding consulting thing.